Hey everybody, how's it going? Here at Micah Comic Universe, we want to talk to you guys about everything. So, what better than to talk about the Season 7 recap of Game of Thrones? Now, as everybody may know, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. So, I've been following the series since it came out. I'm very familiarized with the books. Even though I've only read a couple of them, I'm still familiar with the books. I'm still getting through them. It's hard because not only do I read the books, I also read the comic book series. First off, I want to just tell everybody I'm glad you joined me today because we are going to have a great time. Today we're going to talk about Game of Thrones, everybody. So if you haven't seen Season 7, I'm just going to forewarn you. This is just a spoiler alert. Um, definitely get on Season 7 because it's been a lot of fun. It's been just action-packed. Um, and, you know, it's not as, you know, intricately thought out as the other seasons. But I've still been enjoying it, mainly because we finally get to see the Night King and some of the stuff that we learned about in the previous seasons finally come full circle in this season. Now, we're going to go over some stuff with you guys today. I'm... I know this may seem like a lot, but we're just going to go over what's going on in Game of Thrones in Season 7, and, uh, you know, what I think might happen at the end of this season on to next season, which would be Season 8, our very last season of Game of Thrones. So, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is, if you're not aware, you can get any one of the seasons, 1 through 6 is available right now on Blu-ray, so look for those at walmart or online on amazon wherever you usually buy your blu-rays from definitely something to look out for because these are chock full of background information backstory and a little little bit of information about what happened before the events of game of thrones now uh aside from the blu-rays i am going to let you guys know that there is a comic series that was based off the book series if you're not familiar or not aware of that um it is a straight adaptation of the books that were written by George R.R. R. Martin, and those were adapted by uh, two comic book form uh, by writer uh, Daniel Abraham, and we got um, a lot of the art done by Tommy Patterson, and the cover art for most of the first series was done by the great Alex Ross. Uh, now, Dynamite produced and published the first series back in 2011, if you're not familiar with that. Uh, definitely check those out at your local comic book shop or uh, at a convention. I'm sure you could find those back issues pretty easily now. However, they are slowly climbing in price, so be aware of that. Now, let's get on to se uh, Season 7, Game of Thrones. Now, I'm going to go around the whole sigil uh, that comes into the intro of Game of Thrones. So we're going to go through some of these families and we're going to let you know what's going on with everybody, basically. At least what's going on with the main players in Season 7 of Game of Thrones. We're going to start off with the Starks. Now, the Starks have had a hell of a time through this whole series, and it really revolves around them. So uh, let's just break it down. We don't have many Starks left in this season, okay? But we get to see some reunions, some redemption, and of course we get to see a lot of revenge. That's right, because the wolves have been lying in sheep's clothing, waiting and waiting. And of course we get that in the beginning of season seven, once Arya Stark, who is our first character we're gonna talk about, she finally exacts her revenge for the Red Wedding, and it is glorious. We finally get to see the phrase come to their bitter end. And it's awesome the way she takes care of business here. Um, as Arya's character kind of progresses through the season, we see not only does she get her revenge, we also see her return to Winterfell and to her family, basically. So uh, we're definitely seeing a lot of uh, characters reuniting in this season if they haven't previously already reunited. Now, Arya... Uh, Melise Williams, if you're not familiar with uh, the actress, she's also scheduled to play Wolfsbane in the new X-Men film that's coming out, The New Mutants, basically. So definitely some uh, one of those characters we're going to look for. Uh, which brings me to my next key player in the Stark family, which is Sansa Stark. Now, Sansa's been around since the beginning as well. And if you're not familiar, Sophie Turner was also... She expanded out into the Marvel Cinematic Universe... 
uh, by uh, being in the X Men Apocalypse film. She was Jean Grey, Dark Phoenix, and now we're also going to get a Dark Phoenix saga. So she's going to be starring as Jean Grey in that film as well. So we're going to see some of that like blending of. Uh, certain uh game of thrones characters within other key uh comic book universes now talking about sansa sansa has changed tremendously and it's through not only the influence that she obtained while staying with cersei throughout seasons two and a little bit in season one but her recent um traveling companion and peter baelish now this guy is definitely i like to title these two <laughs> the clever girl and the creeper basically because he is just creeping all over the place and he's up to something and we all want to know what he's up to so we got to stay tuned to find out about that now not only do we have the girl the female starks the lady starks back in the house we also have them a couple of the boys have returned we have bran who's back from north of the wall and unfortunately he went through some Difficult trials north of the wall. Let's put it like that. Um, but Bran's definitely one of those characters that is very underappreciated, considering now he's going to be our three-eyed raven. And basically, he's the only one who could really help combat against the dark forces of the Night Army and the Night King, uh, which we are going to get into the White Walkers and the Night King. Don't worry, everybody. I know everyone's excited to talk about that stuff, too. So, um, which brings me to my last remaining Stark in the family, which is, of course, the King in the North right now, Mr. Jon Snow himself. Um, and, of course, uh, it's kind of interesting because Jon Snow, of course, is the same kind of guy. He hasn't changed. He still knows nothing. He doesn't know how to rule. He doesn't know how to control people. He doesn't know how the game is really played. So it's always these little instances where we think, oh, that's it, John's gone, and it's it, and that's the end of his story. But they always pick it back up. So um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think about the Starks. You know, comment below on the video. Tell me who your favorite Stark is. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the next family on that sigil up there, which is uh, the Lannisters. Now, the Lannisters have a very rocky time right now and a really tough time ahead of them. They've lost pretty much all of their allies, except for Euron Greyjoy, who we'll get into the Greyjoys a little bit further down the line here. But basically, Cersei's in charge of the Seven Kingdoms, and she and Jaime are trying to control every th all seven of the kingdoms, but they're just surrounded by enemies. I mean, you have the, the king in the north and the Starks in the north. You have in the east uh, Daenerys and her armies of the Unsullied and the Dothraki, including her three bitch and dragons. That's right, I said three bitch and dragons. Um, but overall, we basically see that Cersei is starting to deal with the fact that she's surrounded. And... You know, I know it's a little more intricate and it does play out better in this season, but we really got to see what kind of a character she was last season. So I can only imagine what's going to happen by the end of this season or by the end of the series with her, especially with Jamie. My personal theory, and this is just something that I want to share with everybody, and I would love to hear your comments about it, but I always think in these types of stories, everything comes full circle. And we have already seen a mix uh, in Cersei's character between her father and the Mad King, which almost leads me to believe that Jaime just may have to step forward again and become not just a Kingslayer, but a Queenslayer. So we'll, we'll definitely keep you guys posted, but let me know what you guys think about that theory. Go ahead and comment on that below, and uh, also let me know what you guys think about what's going on with the Lannister household. Anyway, so Tyrion is changed sides completely, all right? We've seen a drastic change in him. Um, you know, over, over the course of this whole ordeal, Tyrion has had it the roughest. And some people may think that, eh, I think you're a little far-fetched on that, you know, on claiming that or saying that. But it's very true, because he is always pushed back. He's never, ever able to push forward and get himself into to where he wants to be 
And the real only time we do see him come forward and always be that presence, that strong male presence that is needed, is when he is the hand of the king. Which makes complete sense why Daenerys made him ha hand to the queen. So, now, moving on from the Lannisters, we're going to get into the Targaryens now. Now, let's just say this. Daenerys is here. Dragons are here. We are very excited for that. I could not believe this. I've been waiting for six seasons, <laughs> like everyone else, for them to show up to Westeros, and we finally, finally, Daenerys comes home. And the cool thing is, is we actually get to see Daenerys really connecting to the world that she's come back to. She's really trying to prove to people that she's not just here to steal the land, steal the throne, kill and murder and pillage and rape. No, she's here to change the world for good. And as you can tell from previous seasons, the kind of work that she did in Slaver's Bay, uh, over in Essos, and all throughout um, Essos and all of those encounters she was in, she definitely changed that world, and I believe she could change this world as well. Deep down, everybody knows it, the true heir to the Iron Throne is Daenerys Targaryen. There's just no getting around that. It's the honest truth. However, I know there's a lot of theories. You may not agree with me, so go ahead and comment below, guys. I would like to hear what you guys have to say about that. Now, moving on. Not only does uh, Daenerys have uh, her army of the Unsullied, which is led by Grey Worm, um, she has a great supporting uh, system, a supporting cast, not just in Tyrion, but in Melisandre, and as well as uh, Grey Worm and uh, Varys as well, you know, so I, I'll, ultimately everybody can agree that her favorite and probably everybody's favorite, uh, you know, assistant to Daenerys would probably be Jorah Mormont. And I cannot wait to see what happens to him, especially after he went through that whole grayscale ordeal. Ugh. Basically, getting skinned alive just to stay alive. It's, ugh. But, thank God that, you know, he got help from Samuel Tarly. But Samwell doesn't really know what's going on. And we're not going to get into the Tarleys too much. But let's just say Sam's on the uprise to take over Castle Tarly. <laughs> All right. So the last thing I do want to mention, though, is that um, Amelia Clark will be in the Han Solo movie. So that's something to definitely like look forward to. Uh, and on top of that, I think Ron Howard's directing that film now. So... That should be really, really cool. Um, la lastly, we're going to go over the Baratheons and the Greyjoys. I'm just going to combine this down so that way you guys kind of understand. So with the Greyjoys, of course, Theon, still a coward. And there's a slight theory behind his character, which I'll share with you guys in just a minute. And then, of course, uh, her, his sister, Yori, uh, Yuri, who's she's captive she got held captive uh she she's captured so we don't really know what's going to happen to her just yet it almost seems like uh cersei's kind of waiting to see what she wants to do because we already saw the torture she put the dornish uh uh snake sisters through so well, i'd like to see what happens uh from this point on now uh moving on there's also euron Greyjoy. now euron is the uncle to uh, Yara and Theon. And basically, um, he is Cersei's last ally. And basically, he's only just got his fleet. Although we do get this really cool episode where they do the sneak attack on the Greyjoys as they're sailing down through Dorne to get to uh, uh, King's Landing. So we do see another battle in the Blackwater Bay as well uh, going on there. Now, last but not least, Baratheon. Now, we all thought the Baratheons were gone, except for one, Gendry. Now, Gendry, uh, of course, is the bastard son to Robert Baratheon, our original king from season one, and the original husband to Cersei. Let's, let's circle back here, folks. Um, I basically want to say that uh, I like the idea behind keeping one of the Baratheons around, but... 
it also seems like it was one of those longevity things where it's like, eh, we'll keep him around, but, uh, you know, in the books, it seems like his character kind of fades off. So, I mean, maybe uh, George R.R. R. Martin's going to write that into The Winds of Winter. I'm not sure. We will wait and see when the book's release. Speaking of the book release, guys, comment below. and let, uh, Everybody comment below, please, and let me know what you think about this delay on this book release. Everybody's been waiting for The Winds of Winter. And then I believe the last book is titled A Day of Spring. So we're definitely looking forward to those two books. Now, The Night King, as we all know, he's in charge of the White Walker army. And the White Walkers are basically the arm, army of the dead. Well, they're like the leaders of the army of the dead. The wraiths are the army, really. And not only do we have just dead humans on their side, I've, Jesus, I mean, we've seen humans, they have giants, they have horses, and now, what's really scary, poor Viserion died at the hands of the White Walkers and the Night King. And now, the Night King has a dragon. Oh my God. A dragon! Okay, so this is intense, guys. We, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, is this thing going to still shoot fire or is it going to shoot ice? And that brings us full circle to a story of fire and ice. <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyways, the idea behind this, folks, is we don't know what's going to happen. But season seven finale is titled The Dragon and the Wolf. And it's 79 minutes long and 43, uh, 79 minutes and 43 seconds long. That's a long episode, everybody. I I'm excited for it because that's like pretty much like watching a movie. But what's going to happen? Obviously, from the title alone, we obviously and from previous episodes, if you watched season seven, we've seen Daenerys and Jon Snow kind of, you know, developing a love relationship in a way. But we'll see how that plays out. Not to mention how they're actually tied together through their bloodline and that's probably the reason why Jon Snow gets along with the dragons as well so but the White Walkers are still a problem guys and it's up to Jon Snow and the rest of the humans in Westeros to combat against this evil force so I don't know about you guys I'm really excited um, and I'm very excited to see what happens in season 8 so Definitely keep up with us here at My Comic Universe because we are going to give you guys some stuff uh, pertaining to Season 8 and maybe a little bit more on Season 7 and Game of Thrones in general. My predictions for Season 8, I'll definitely put them down here in the comments, but I believe that we, it, we are just going to see the tip of the iceberg in this war. So if you got comments, your interests at all in Game of Thrones, comment below, share, like, uh, follow us on Instagram and here at mycomicuniverse.com. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. I'd like to thank everybody for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys are keeping up with Game of Thrones because I know I am. And I will see you guys next time. And stay tuned because we have more Game of Thrones stuff to talk to you guys about on Season 8. Catch you next time. <laughs>